So far in this series on sorting algorithms, we have talked about three of the sorting algorithms, selection sort, bubble sort, and insertion sort. And we have seen that these algorithms are not so fast. They are all big O of n square in, in average case. Now in this lesson, we are going to talk about one algorithm which is big O of n log n in worst case. And this algorithm is merge sort. Big O of n log n time complexity in worst case is definitely a lot better, a lot faster than big O of n square in average case. So in this lesson, we will study, discuss and analyze merge sort algorithm. There is one prerequisite for this lesson. You should have at least heard about recursion as a programming concept. Okay, so let's get started. Once again, I'll pick up a very simple sorting scenario. Given a list of integers in the form of an array, something like this. Let's name this array A. We have eight elements in the array, so we have indices from zero to seven. We want to sort this list in increasing order of the value of integers. So the list should be rearranged like this. Our approach in merge sort algorithm will be entirely different from what we had done in previous sorting algorithms where we were rearranging the elements or changing their positions only by swapping or shifting. What we are going to do here is we are going to break this problem into sub problems. We will divide this array into two equal halves or rather two possibly equal halves. So we will find some middle position and we can say that all the elements before this position belong to the first half and all the elements after on or after this position belong to the second half. If an array would have odd number of elements, one of the halves will have one more element than the other half. We have eight elements in the original array here, so we have two equal halves. Now think about this. What if we are somehow able to sort these two halves? And let's say these two halves are entirely different arrays. They are created separately in memory by copying values from the original array A. If we are somehow able to sort these two arrays, then we can merge these two lists together into the original list in sorted order. Of course, there has to be some algorithm to merge two sorted arrays into a third array in sorted order. The algorithm will be pretty straightforward. Let's say this particular sub array is named L and this particular sub array is named R, L for left and R for right. Because all the elements in A are present either in L or R, we can start overwriting A from left to right. We can start with 0th position in A. At any point, the smallest element will be either the smallest unpicked in L or the smallest unpicked in R. And let's say we color code the smallest unpicked in L and R by this yellow color. What we can do is we can pick the smaller of the two smallest unpicked in L and R. Uh, we have two candidates here, one and three. One is smaller, so we can write one here at 0th index. And now we can look for the number to fill at 1th index in A. Uh, let's say the cells of the picked elements will be color coded in green. If I have to write pseudo code to merge the elements of two sorted arrays into a third array, uh, let's say we want to write a function named merge that will take three arrays as argument left, right and the array in which it should be merging the two sorted arrays left and right. Then I'll do something like this. I'll first take a variable that will store the number of elements in L and another variable that would store the number of elements in R. In a real program, we can also pass these two values to the function. Now I'll take three variables i, j and k and initialize them all to zero. Uh, let's say i will mark the index of the smallest unpicked in L, r will mark the, j will mark the index of the smallest unpicked in r and k will mark the index of the position that needs to be filled in A. For our example here at this stage we have i equal 1, j equal 0 and k equal 1 because we have already filled one element at index 0 in A. But when we will start, we will start with all three i, j and k as 0. And now my code will go like while 
i is less than nl if nl is the number of elements in l then for i to be a valid index it should be less than nl and similarly for j to be valid it should be less than nr so while both these two indices are valid both these indices i and j are valid we can say something like if li is less than or equal to rj so we are comparing the smallest in or rather the smallest unpicked in l with the smallest unpicked in r uh, in this case at kth position in a we will write li remember we are overwriting a and that's not a problem and now I need to increment k and need to go to the next position and I also need to increment i to go to the next unpicked in L and if this condition is not true if rj is less than li then ak will be rj and once again we need to increment k and we need to increment j to go to the next unpicked in r uh, this k equal k plus 1 is in both the conditions if as well as else so I have moved it out coming back to our example here i and j are both valid indices now we will compare if li is less than or equal to rj well yes li is less than rj so we need to pick 2 for 1th index and we need to increment both i as well as k and for the next position it's between 4 and 3 3 will go and we will increment j and k this time next it's between 4 and 5 uh, next it's between 5 and 6 next it's between 7 and 6 and after 6 has gone we are done with all the elements in L i is equal to 4 now which is not a valid index so in the while loop this condition while i less than number of elements in L will be false and this is definitely one probability one of the arrays L or R uh, will exhaust first in that case we need to pick all the elements from the other array and fill rest of the positions in A after we come out of this while loop we can write statements like while I is less than the number of elements in L so we can check whether there are leftovers in L uh, we can do the same thing we can say AK is li and then we can increment i as well as k I'm short of space here so I'm writing multiple statements in the same line and similarly we will write a while loop like while j is less than number of elements in r we can fill in a k uh, with r j and this time j and k will be incremented uh, once we are out of this first while loop only one of these two while loops will execute because only one of the sub lists or sub arrays will have leftovers uh, for this particular example this third while loop will execute because the right sub array has leftovers so we will fill up all the remaining positions and finally we will have a sorted arrangement in A this is our merge logic uh, and there are a couple of ways in which we can clean up this code further but for now let's just understand the logic and now coming back to where we had started in the beginning we had imagined that if somehow these two sub arrays or sub lists uh, I'm redrawing the unsorted original array and the unsorted sub lists so we had said that if we are somehow able to sort these two lists then we can merge them back into the original list but of course we need to have a deterministic logic to sort these two sub lists or sub arrays also and the logic is we can break these sub lists even further so this sub list comprising of four elements two four one and six can be further divided into these two halves and this list comprising of eight five three seven can be uh, divided into these two sub lists eight five and three seven the solution for 2416 this particular sub list can be constructed after we sort uh, these two sub lists 2 4 and 1 6 and merge them back and similarly we can sort these two lists sub lists and merge them back to sort this 8537 sub list uh, once again we have these four sublists 
of two elements each and they can also be divided. What we are basically doing here is that we are reducing a problem into sub problems in a recursive or self similar manner and at any step once we get solution for the sub problems we can construct the solution for the actual problem. If we have two sorted sub lists we can sort the parent list also. We can go on reducing a sub list only till we have more than one element in the sub list. Once we reach a stage where we have only one element in a sub list then we cannot reduce that sub list any further. So once we reach a state where our sub list has only one element our recursion will end and a list with only one element is always sorted. We do not need to do anything to sort it. Now at this stage we can start combining back or merging the sublists. So these two sublists can be merged. Uh, let's say we will depict the cells in sorted sublists. In green we have already discussed the merge logic. This sublist 2, 4 will still be the same after merge also. Uh, sublists 1 and 6, these two sublists with only one element each will also merge and now we can merge 2, 4 and 1, 6. Uh, coming to this side, all these sublists with just one element are already sorted. So we will start merging back. Finally these two sorted sublists 1, 2, 4, 6 and 3, 5, 7, 8 can be merged back into the original list A. And now let's write pseudocode for this algorithm. I will write a function named merge sort that will take an array A as argument. In the function first I'll take a variable that will store the number of elements in A and now we can partition A into two halves. We need to partition A only if n is greater than 1. If n is less than 2 then we have only one element in the array. So the array is already sorted. We can simply return. Else what we can do is we can first find out a middle position and then we can create two arrays one of size equal to mid and another of size n minus mid. So first array will have all the elements starting index 0 till n mid minus 1. Uh, we can just fill the elements. We can run a loop from 0 to mid minus 1 so there will be mid elements in all and we can say left i is a i and then we can run another loop from index mid till n minus 1 so there will be n minus mid elements in all and we need to fill in right i minus mid as a i. Now that we have created left and right sub lists we can first make a recursive call to sort the left sublist and once we are done sorting the left sublist we can make a recursive call to sort the right sublist and once both left and right sublists are sorted we can make a call to the merge function that we had written before to merge left and right sublists into A. It's really important to visualize how this recursion will actually execute once again I'll start over with an unsorted array and let's say this array is passed to the merge sort function. Now let's run through this code and see what's happening. I'll start with the first line. We calculate n, the number of elements in the array. The number of elements in this array is 8. Uh, it's not less than 2. This condition is not true. So we will not return and exit from this function. We will move forward we will calculate the mid index. Now n is 8 so mid will be 4 and now we will create two arrays left and right one of size mid and another of size n minus mid. We will fill up these arrays. The first four elements will go to left and next four will go to right and now we are making a recursive call. When a function calls itself then such a call is called recursive call a function calling itself is not much different from a function A calling another function B. At this stage the execution of this particular function call with this array with 8 elements as argument is paused and the machine says that hey let me go and finish this particular function call and then I'll come back to you. The machine goes on to execute 
merge sort on this particular array with four elements 2, 4, 1 and 6. Now once again we start at the first line in a new call to merge sort for this new array. n is not less than 2 so we will not return and exit. This particular condition is the base condition or the exit condition from the recursion. If this was not there we would have gone endlessly in recursion. We needed to stop somewhere. Once again we will create lefts and rights and once again there will be a recursive call passing this array 2, 4 as argument. So once again the state of execution of this second merge sort will also be paused. All of these are paused. The state of execution of these functions, the function calls with these arrays as arguments are paused. This one is executing. Now once again here also we will have a recursive call. Now for this particular array with just one element this base condition will be true. So this call will simply exit. And now for this guy, this array with two elements 2 and 4, this second recursive call will be made with just this element 4, which once again is the base condition. And now once both the merge sort, both the recursive calls for this particular sublist with two elements return back, merge function will be called. And then this guy will finish and then will uh, the control will return back for execution of this particular sublist 2416 and this guy will make the second merge sort call. This guy will first make a call um, for this sublist with just one element and once this is done it will make another recursive call. Now we will have a merge for this guy 16 and then control will return back here to this array 2416 and merge will be called for this guy and now once this guy 1246 will finish the control will return back to the function call corresponding to the original array and this guy will make another recursive call the second merge sort call. In actual implementation we must make sure that all these extra spaces and extra sub lists that we are creating should be deleted from the memory once we are done using them. Like at this stage we do not need all these arrays with one and two elements in the memory. Now for this guy 8537 we will have a recursive call passing 85 that will again make a recursive call with just one element 8 and then we will also have a call to 5 that will simply return. Once 58 returns we will have call for 37 3 and 7 will simply merge and now 58 and 37 will merge. And finally, when execution for 3578 will finish, we will have a call to merge for the original array or the initial array. So this is merge sort algorithm for you. At the start of the lesson, we had said that this is big O of n log n in terms of time complexity. In our next lesson, we will implement this algorithm. We will run some real code and we will also analyze the time and space complexity of this algorithm. This is it for this lesson. Thanks for watching.